y'all, it's Alana and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I am going to be telling you a bunch of mistakes that candidates make when applying to jobs at startups. If you don't know by now, I am a tech recruiter and I work at a startup. So I see a lot of mistakes happening from a recruiter's side of things and I really wish that I could coach candidates while I'm talking to them on the phone and telling them what they could do to improve, but I can't because of liability stuff. So that's why I wanna make a whole video about it. So in case you are looking to apply to a tech company or a startup, then this video will really help you out so you're not making all of these mistakes. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I post a lot of content about living in Portland and San Francisco and even life navigating the dating world. If you're single navigating the dating world or you live in Portland or San Francisco, I think you'll really like it here. Okay, wow, that was a really long intro. Let's get into this video. So a popular job practice that candidates do, which is also recommended is to send recruiters or hiring managers messages and LinkedIn requests on LinkedIn. Yes, that is something you should do, but many of you are doing it wrong, especially new grads. So let me tell you some of the biggest mistakes that I see when it comes to approaching recruiters and hiring managers on LinkedIn. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see, especially from new grads, is when you send a LinkedIn request connection with a message and you say something along the lines of, hey Alana, I just graduated in data science. I wanna know what kind of data science roles your company is hiring for. Let's unpack this really quick and I wanna tell you why this is a big mistake on your part. First of all, how about you go ahead and see where I actually work? Did you even bother to do your research? Because when I see this message, it tells me that you have not done research. So one big mistake is a lot of candidates assume when they see a recruiter on LinkedIn, they just automatically assume it's a recruiter who works for an agency or they do other external sales recruiting. So that's not the case. Some people don't realize when they're reaching out to an in-house recruiter who actually works at a company. So it's really important that you click on the name of the company that the recruiter works at. See if it's an actual company or if it's a recruiting agency. And that can give you a good idea of what kind of recruiter you're talking to in the first place. So that's a big mistake is not knowing the company that the recruiter works for. Another mistake that I've seen that I've gotten when I was unemployed, I had candidates reaching out to me all the time saying like, hey Alana, I wanna know if you have any open roles at your company. First of all, did you even read my profile? It says that I'm unemployed. Like I'm not working at that company anymore. That's gonna look really, really bad on you for not actually doing your research and reading my profile and seeing my work history. That is very, very important. So if you are curious to know what kind of roles this recruiter is recruiting for, again, check out the company. If it's an in-house company, go to the actual careers page and look at the jobs that are posted and see if there's anything that is a good fit for you. I am not responsible for reading your profile when you reach out to me and determining whether there's a good fit or not. That's up to you. You need to take the time to actually see what jobs my company is hiring for and see if there's anything that matches your skill set. It's not up to me to match you. I'm not an external recruiter. Now, if you wanted to approach an external recruiter and say like, hi, I'm in the market for a full stack engineering job. I know Python and React. I was curious to know if you had any roles that uses this tech stack. That is more appropriate to ask a tech recruiter who works at an agency. But it's also really important that you still do research on the agency that that recruiter works for because what if they don't recruit tech roles? What if they do something more in the nonprofit sector or they do more executive recruiting such as VP level or C level staff that isn't tech at all? So it's really important that you do your research to make sure that you are reaching out to the right people. It's a common mistake that I see all of the time, especially from new grads. So stop assuming that all recruiters work at an agency, actually do your research of the company that the recruiter works for, and actually check out the careers page to see if there are any jobs that fit your skill set. 
because you're just wasting a recruiter's time when you ask them to look at their profile and see if there's a match. That's not how it works. So I just want you to be super mindful of that when you are trying to reach out to recruiters and hiring managers on LinkedIn and sending them a connection request. And the last thing is if you are gonna send a connection request to a recruiter, please leave a note. Why are you connecting with me? If you leave me a note, I'm going to be more inclined to accept your request. But that's only if you leave me a note appropriately and accordingly. If you leave me a note saying, hey, I'm looking for a job, what roles do you have for me? I'm not gonna accept your request. So make sure you do your research and know what you're getting yourself into. Understand what my company does. Look at the careers page. If you apply to a job at my company, tell me what job you applied and I will make sure that I look at your application to determine if you're a good fit or not. But don't say, hey, can we please hop on a phone call? Because I don't wanna hop on a phone call with you if I already know that you're not a good fit. I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna waste my time getting on a phone call with you if you don't have the skill sets that are required for this job. But I will still make sure that I at least look at your application so you get first priority in knowing whether or not you want your application reviewed. I will at least do that. Follow those tips and that will make you so much more successful on LinkedIn. Let's go on to the next thing. So this next tip is actually going to be more for those who are international candidates, especially if they just graduated with a master's or a bachelor's and they just got their F1 OPT visa. So here's the thing. I know startups are really cool and exciting to a lot of new grads, but visa candidates, I'm going to be very, very brutally honest with you. I strongly encourage you to not apply to early stage startups. I'm talking from seed to potentially series C because they're not gonna be able to afford it. I truly think you're wasting your time applying to early stage startups when you're on an F1 OPT visa because you're looking to get your H1B visa sponsored. I understand it is incredibly hard to find companies that are willing to sponsor your visa. I will never understand that struggle, but as a recruiter, I do get a lot of great talent who need visas sponsored. And it is really discouraging on my end too when I have to reject you simply because you need your visa sponsored later on and I also need to make hires on my end. Trust me, I wanna hire people. I want people to work at my company. I want international candidates at my company, but it costs a lot of money to file an H-1B visa and to sponsor it. And a lot of companies just simply don't have the money for it. There are a couple suggestions that you can take if you are looking to get your visa sponsored. I would look at startups that are maybe at a funding round of series D and above, or look at big top tech companies that offer recent grad programs. There are so many out there. They will definitely sponsor your visa. They have the money for it. I recommend that those are the companies that you should be targeting. If there is a startup that really does excite you, feel free to message the recruiter on LinkedIn and ask them if the company sponsors visas. Sometimes the applications will say whether or not they can sponsor visas. If they don't say that, it doesn't hurt to ask. That way you don't waste your time applying to a job that isn't gonna sponsor your H-1B visa. Another great way to find out if a company can sponsor visas or not is this website down below. Actually, wait, I have two. So there's myvisajobs.com and then there's also h1bgreater.com. Those are two great websites that can tell you whether or not companies can provide visa sponsorship or not. So I highly encourage you to check those two websites out and look up to see if the company can sponsor your H1B visa. And that way you're not wasting your time applying to jobs that aren't gonna be able to sponsor you. So that's a great tip to help you get on the right track to finding a job as an international candidate. New grads. I also recommend that you do not bother with targeting early stage startups for your first job. Unless if the company offers a junior level position, they're most likely not going to. Startups need people who have a ton of experience and knowledge and no offense, but you doing Python once or twice in one of your grad school courses doesn't make you proficient in Python. 
I see this mistake over and over again from new grads who say that they are proficient in Python and they didn't have any strong internship experience and they really only use Python in academic projects. That doesn't make you proficient. I, I'm sorry to tell you that. My recommendation again is to target either bigger companies or to target maybe smaller companies that are willing to take talent that at least understand Python, but they're not a tech company, if that makes sense. So I know that's kind of a tough pill to swallow. I really don't recommend that you apply to early stage startups because there's a really good chance that your application is gonna get passed over. If you have strong internship experience and you do apply to a, what is a more junior level role, then I think that's fine and I wish you the best of luck. But if you're applying to a job that requires three years of data engineering experience, when you have just graduated the master's degree. I hate to be the one who's gonna give you the bad news, but you don't really stand a chance. I'm, I'm really sorry. Sadly, that is technically a mistake that new grads make, but the thing is like, they don't, they don't know that. And I don't expect new grads to know that startups are actually a little bit harder to join. So I hope that gives you a better reason as to why you may not have gotten a lot of interviews from startups because they're still in the early stages. Maybe if they're in a later stage, it may be possible. But again, if they're from like series C to series B, that is probably not gonna work. So keep that in mind when you're applying to jobs. Let's say you finally get an interview. It's for a startup. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see from candidates all of the time and it is one of the few reasons as to why I will not move forward with a candidate. So when I ask a candidate why they wanna work at my company, like what got them interested in wanting to work for my company, a common response that I get from candidates is, well, I read the job description and it matches my skill set, and it just seems like a really cool place to work. How generic and unacceptable is that answer? Aside from the job description, which I try to prompt candidates to get them to say a little bit more, like I really try to give candidates a bit more of a push and like, okay, like I get you read the job description. I understand y'all need jobs, but startups want you to actually have a valid reason for you to actually be genuinely interested in what the company does and what their mission is about. A big mistake that candidates make is that they don't do the research on the company at all. There are gonna be times where recruiters may ask you, what do you know about this company? And if you say, mm, no, I don't know much, or I just saw it on LinkedIn and I applied, not an acceptable answer. You need to do your research on the company and understand what the company does and what their mission is. My recommendations are to read the About Us section read the blog that the company has, if they have one, and check out their careers page and see if they have anything that talks about their company culture. I know some startups may not necessarily have a careers page and it just takes you to all their job listings, but maybe look at their Glassdoor reviews and see if there's anything about culture in there, but don't say you read the Glassdoor reviews and that they were all positive. That's also not gonna get you anywhere. Look at the actual content and think, I really like how this company provides opportunity to do this, or I think what you guys are doing is exciting because of X, Y, and Z. Don't just say what you guys are doing is exciting. Give us a reason as to why you think it's exciting. Common response that people tell me is, oh, well, I wanna work at a startup. Okay, why do you wanna work at a startup? What makes a startup cool? Like, what's your reason behind that? You need to be more specific and be ready to share a little bit more detailed. So being detailed in your responses and backing up your reasoning is going to be very important. Startups are very, very sensitive and they really need people who are going to actually be genuinely interested in them. It's really important that you do your research and please stop saying you read the job description and it matches your skill set because that's not gonna get you hired, promise you. Let's go on to the last thing. So this last one is going to blow your mind. There is this huge myth that is constantly going around the internet over and over again when it comes to resume writing and submitting your application. You've probably heard that the ATS filters out your resume, that you have to target certain keywords in your resume or else it's never going to land on human eyes. Guess what guys, that is a load of bullshit. There's no such thing as ATS bots. 
that are scanning your resume and automatically rejecting your resume. A human is rejecting your resume. So when you get that generic rejection email, a recruiter sent that to you. It's a template, but a recruiter was the one who looked at your resume and determined that it wasn't a fit. So the biggest mistake is stop with the keyword stuffing. So many of you people are stuffing a bunch of keywords because you were spoon fed this bullshit lie that the ATS needs to pick up on all these keywords in order for it to pass the ATS bot test. That doesn't exist. So yes, keywords are important. I will look for certain keywords, but it's more of like skill sets or things that you've done at your company. I wanna look at that and I do think it's important that you do tailor your resume to every company that you apply for, but the keyword stuffing is a big mistake because it just tells me that you're just throwing in buzzwords to make your resume seem like it's greater than what it is and it basically isn't going to be a good representation of your skill set. So stop with the keyword stuffing, just be honest. Let's say you're applying for a data engineer job, it requires SQL, Python, and ETL pipelines. Make sure you do have ETL pipelines, Python and SQL kind of all over your resume. So I can understand like that you were using SQL and Python at one of your previous companies. That is all you really need. But there's no need for you to stuff keywords to match crazy job description things so it will pass the ATS test. Recruiters and hiring managers are gonna pick up on that and they're not gonna be impressed. Did I just blow your mind with that one? I hope I did. And you can breathe and realize that it's not the ATS bots that are rejecting your resume. It's a human. So guys, tell me which mistake surprised you the most? Which one did you take away? Which mistake have you made before? Was there anything that you learned that's gonna help you improve your job search? Comment down below and let me know. And if you like this video and you thought it's gonna be a great way to kind of change your approach when looking for a job, make sure you do give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week with a brand new video. Bye.